amazing opportunity to stand before your people, proclaiming your word and your gospel. Lord, I pray that you will lower me down so that your word will stand up. And Lord, that we will open our hearts and our minds and our thoughts to receive your word. Lord, I thank you for this day that you have made that has been coming since the very beginning. And we love you so much, Lord God. We love you most because you have given us of your son, Jesus, who died for us on the cross one day, giving us a right to be able to come to you. And Lord, we give you all the praise. Let us not take that for granted. We love you and we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God is good, amen. amen. He is certainly worthy to be praised, amen. When, when Black History, with Black History Month wrapping up, I'd like to close out the month with a celebratory expression of gratitude for those who have come before us, those that we may know and those that we may not know. But those who have come before us have paved the way so that we can really look back and experience many of the benefits that mostly all of us have had over the years. Amen. Black history is important to our culture. Black history is important to our culture. Amen. Because it literally gives us reason to be proud of our heritage. Yes. Gives us reason to be proud of our heroes and in some cases, ourselves. <laughs> Amen. There seems there's been many a contribution to this world to include here in these United States that have stemmed from the minds the hands of ingenuity of black people. And, and this month of February, as you know, allows us to reflect on many of those contributions each and every year. Amen. But let me shift to a quick station identification and tell you that before there was any history at all, yeah. there is his story. Yes. His story. His story. His story. Uh, I, I've heard, and, and I, don't, I don't mean to sound the, the downplay of everything, but I've heard over the years that before there was any history, there was black history. And while it sounds good, it's not so. Amen. Uh, because, because the scripture says that before the foundations of the world began, Amen. he was already on the scene. Amen. 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 So I just wanted to make sure that that, that station identification uh, came into place because sometimes we try to wedge events in priority that makes something else of less significance. Amen. That's deep. So we got to keep in mind once again that before the foundations of the world, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit existed and that is his story. Amen. Amen. He's sticking to it. Let me shift gears on us again very quickly because I want to go ahead and lead us to our theme today by sharing an acronym with you that is mostly used in military terminology. And that acronym is three little letters known as M-I-A. I heard somebody uh, say it out loud already. M-I-A stands for missing in action mm -hmm. and can be used figuratively for someone or something that is notably or unexpectedly missing, absent, or inactive. Amen. Y'all got that already, right? Amen. 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 That being said, M-I-A are three individual letters of the alphabet that should really make us stop in our tracks spiritually and ask ourselves, am I, M-I-A? Amen. You might not get a lot of amens on that. Amen. I, I got it. Because <laughs> most of us don't want to ask that question to ourselves, Sarah. We want to. We want to already be in place, right, Tom? And, and so it's kind of hard when we look at ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves truthfully, am I, am I a? Coming from the book of James, who was the half-brother of Jesus, we see that James chapter 2 provides us with an incredible self-imposed test to determine our faith barometer. In other words, what is the measure of your faith? And if you say you have faith, then what are you doing with it? Amen. Do you really have it or are you a good pretender? And what does that have to do with Black History Month or, or, or even history in general? Well, it actually has to do with everything. 
Because the best example that any of us can give is a life lived where we follow the directions pointing others to Jesus whose witness our faith was. Amen. 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 It has everything to do with the situation of our lives because if we are not to be MIA, somebody should see something in us, Sister Maria, that can reflect Jesus on the inside of us. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, today my prayer for us is that after looking at and reviewing this text, truthfully asking ourselves again, am I MIA? And if the answer is yes, you will go into action. Our culture is rich with heritage. I'm always amazed at the stories that I've come across in my lifetime of those African Americans who pioneered some stuff and invented some stuff. But James, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that tells us that while we may have some stuff, if we don't have faith with some works and a relationship with Christ, then it just means that we've got a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again, because I think I might have messed it up. Uh, it, it got kind of quiet real quick. Our culture is rich with heritage. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed, just as you are, about the stories that I've come across in our lifetime about those African Americans who have pioneered through some stuff. They've invented some stuff. But when I look at this scripture, the writer, James, through the power of the Holy Spirit, tells us that while we may have some stuff, if we don't have faith with some works signifying that we have a relationship with Christ, then we just got a bunch of stuff. Amen. So let's look at the text. In verse 14, we encounter a series of questions from James as he writes, What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and not have works? Can faith save him? And if a brother or sister is to be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you don't give them the things that they need, what does it profit? Amen. In other words, God is asking and telling us uh, in his word that if we say we have faith, but have no evidence of that faith, our actions, our works, or our deeds that 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 really are, are supposed to be in action, can that which we said is faith save a person? James is not disputing the importance of faith, but what he is saying is that real faith, uh -huh. real faith, Amen. is not an intellectual thing; it's a heart thing. Amen. 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 He, he, he's saying it's, it's not some, some type of intellectual action, but it's a deep commitment to being actively obedient to God and his word. Amen. Furthermore, a real good example is noted in verse, verses 15 and 16, because they express loudly that if a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of y'all, <laughs> one of us, says, go ahead and depart and be, be with peace. Be filled and warm. And, and, and you don't give them those things that they, that they have need. Is it profitable? No. And the answer is no. no. So verse 17 fires back and it says that if you've got that kind of faith with no evidence of works, it is dead. Yeah. Your so-called faith by itself alone is dead. Amen. Did you hear that? Your so-called faith. Yes. If you can see my brother, if you can see our brothers, if you can see our siblings, or our friends, or our colleagues in destitute need, mm -hmm. and you don't go into action, but yet you profess that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. who is the head of your life, mm -hmm. and you don't do anything to help those in need, the faith that you have, so-called faith, is dead, dead, dead. That's what the word says. Because faith, real faith, genuine faith, has compassion behind it. Faith, genuine faith, real faith, goes into action and it pushes us into action as well. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord. Amen. We typically look at the fourth Sunday of the month as Youth Sunday. And we kind of been out of sync since the pandemic. I'm glad today to see some young people. Aren't you glad for the young people? And who did that reading today? You did that reading? Man, oh man, oh man. God bless you. I'm glad to see the young people in the house today. And, and I want the, the young people to know that you really need to take heed to this message as well. This message is important for each and every one of us. It's important for younger people. It's important for us middle-aged folk. It's important for us mature folks. <laughs> because just the same, if you profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if you say you got faith, you better have some action behind your confession. Amen. And like Pastor Dyer and Reverend Tico have recently stated, we don't work to get saved. We work because we're saved. Right. We don't have to do it. We don't, we don't have to do it for any other purpose. We work because of the sacrifice that Jesus gave to us. Amen. Brother James continues in his challenge to the readers in verses 18 through 20. Verse 18 says, A man may say that you have faith, that I have faith, that thee has faith, and I have works. James says, Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. James says that we can match up your faith with no works and my faith which works and we can see which one comes out on top. Because of James's realness and he's not boasting in my opinion but he's prompting us to look at ourselves. Examine. See if we are M-I-A. Yeah. Verse 19 says that, that that we believe that there is one God, and we do well. But the devils also believe and tremble. The demons and Satan know the truth about God. I'm going to say that again. The demons and Satan knows the truth about God. But they also hate the truth of the Trinity. They, they hate the Father, they hate the Son, and they hate the Holy Spirit. And that's why they want you MIA. Oh, you missed a good time. <laughs> That's why they want you MIA. Because, because if you hold on to the truth, if you hold on to the faith, it's something that's going to jumpstart you, Sister Kathy, to go into action. And the devils don't want that happening. They want to keep you MIA. And also to keep you D-O-W-N. So James returns again. And he asks his questions. Do you know, O vain man, that what faith without works is dead. So that the main point of these verses is to assure us of that the only possible evidence of true faith is works. Amen. Amen. That's what it's saying. Amen. The only possible outcome Glory. of real faith is for your works to be evident. Amen. Stay with me because I'm really going somewhere. <laughs> James shifts his spiritual attention all the way back to Abraham in verse 21 when he asked was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar oh we've heard the story in Genesis chapter 22 when God spoke to Abraham and told him to take his son your only son your only son Isaac and, and offer him as a sacrifice to me. That's what God tells Abraham. And Abraham followed God's order and took that boy to the altar and was just about to sacrifice him to God. And God says, Abraham, don't lay your hand on your son. Don't do anything uh, to harm the lad. But now that I know that you fear me, Yes. Since you were going to sacrifice your only son to me, God counted Abraham for righteousness. Yes. Why? Because Abraham's faith went into action. Yes. yes, that's a wonderful story if you get a chance to read it. God wanted us to see that Abraham's faith connected with his works. Amen. That's what he wanted to see. He wanted, to, he wanted us to know that Abraham's faith that he had connected with his works because he took Isaac to be sacrificed. Amen. He, didn't, he didn't know all that was going to happen, but he trusted God 
that even if he sacrificed Isaac, the Lord was still going to make a way. Amen. That's what I love about the faith of Abraham. Yeah. Who we. Mm -hmm. He had also said that it was imputed into him for righteousness. Well. And Abraham was called the friend of God. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. The friend of God. Oh, yeah. Yes, in other words, when Abraham believed God, Abraham's faith was credited to, credited to his account as righteous and justified so much so that God said he was my friend. Amen. Woo! That's a good word right there. Ye see then that how that a man's work, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Saints, we got to get up. We got to do something. We got to go into action. We got to do something with our faith that lets the world know that we are joined in the body of Christ. Yeah. That we have professed our Christianity. Yeah. That we don't just look this good on Sunday for nothing. But that when we leave out of these four walls, we can go out those doors into a world, going into action for our Savior, helping him build his kingdom. And finally, we come to the last two verses of James chapter 2. As James really flips the script on us. And he talks about a former businesswoman by the name of Rahab. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, this side, y'all. Y'all pay attention to this side. <laughs> it talks about the story of a former businesswoman. Uh -huh. Self-employed. By the name of Rahab. Amen. Amen. Uh, Y'all know the story. It's found in the book of Joshua. Rahab, for this side, uh, was a prostitute. And when she learned that the children of Israel was going to invade the walled city of Jericho, she covered up for the spies that were sent in to scout things out. So James says that Rahab, <laughs> this businesswoman, was justified by her works when she received the messengers and had sent them out of another way Amen. so that the people of Jericho could capture them. Now God, let me make it clear now, God is not saying that he was okay with Rahab's occupation. All right, let me, let me make that clear. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't okay with Rahab's occupation or he wasn't okay with her to lie and cover up the spies. Amen. But the very content of her faith was enough for our gracious God Amen. to include this prostitute Hallelujah. in the hall of faith because he counted her faith as righteousness for what she did. Amen. Amen. Oh, you missed another good time to say amen. Let me, let me lay this out on my notes, but let me put you into this story. You, some of y'all, probably some of us, we, all of us, have been messed up so bad that we probably looking at ourselves now saying we don't even deserve to be here. Amen. But we had some faith in God. Amen. When the church doors opened up, we walked on up and sat in that little seat. And some of y'all might have sat on the mourner's bench as they called it. And you received Jesus. And over time, things probably weren't so good in your life. But thanks be to God, we are here right now. Amen. Trusting, leading, holding on to, and praising our God. Rahab was justified by her works when she received those messages. And she sent them out another way. And, 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 and as I said again, her the content of her faith was enough for God Amen. to grant her justification, which ultimately led her into the lineage of Jesus Christ. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. So after hearing all of this, about faith. St. Mary, I want you to ask yourself again. Am I? Am I a? My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Black History Month each year in February, I believe that those who had a relationship with Christ were also used so greatly because of their faith. And because of their faith, they were able to go into action. And because they went into action, they were able to break some barriers. Amen. And because they were able to break some barriers, 
we benefited. Amen. Oh man, you missed it again. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, and because we have benefited, we must now go back and pick up the baton and make headway as those before us did. But, excuse me, my challenge to each of us is simply not to build on black history, Hallelujah. but to build on Jesus. Amen. That's our challenge for us. Uh, black history is good, but our challenge is not to build everything that we have, Ebony, on black history. Our challenge is to build on the foundation of Jesus alone. Amen. Jesus is the solid rock. Uh -huh. So put all your faith in him so you can learn how to go into action for the kingdom. Amen. So we won't have only black history or history in general, but most important, we'll have Christian legacy Amen. that prompts us to do better because of our salvation. Amen. But sadly, some of us are MIA. Why are we MIA? Why are we missing in action? It's because we spend too much time and energy on sorrowing, sitting, and sulking when we should be studying, soldiering, and standing. I think I will. We are MIA because we spend too much time and precious energy uh -huh. on sorrowing, sitting, uh -huh. and sulking Hallelujah. when we should be studying, soldiering, Glory. and standing. Amen. We'd rather keep whining out to God instead of activating our faith in God and putting in the work. Yeah. And let me remind you, do you know that faith without works is dead, dead, dead? Amen. So we need to stop allowing the enemy to steal our joy and rob us of our positive thinking so that we can in turn start making a difference. Amen. I, I think we may have a perplex, perplexion in our lives somewhat because we try so hard to make history instead of leaving a legacy. Amen. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. This, this, this dropped into my spirit uh, as I was working on this message. Uh, thank God for calling this, Mike. Um, this dropped into my spirit as I was working on this message. Because I thought about this thing, there is a difference between history and legacy. Amen. There, there, there's a difference. And, and when the Lord laid this on my heart, I had to do some, some soul searches to the point that I had to, I had to start looking at this thing because a lot of us are working on the history. And we forget the legacy. Amen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to take it somewhere because history means the events of the past that can be related to a particular place or subject. In other words, history can be a story of what happened or what may have happened. <laughs> what, what, what happened or what may have happened. Legacy is something different. Because legacy is something that's handed down from one period to the next. I like that part. Because legacy means basically you put a stamp on the future mm -hmm. by making one's life matter. Yeah. Oh man, oh man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One's life matter. All lives oh, matter. Yeah. Amen. Every life matters. Amen. All lives were created by God. And guess what? They all matter. Yeah. When someone seeks to have a legacy, they plant seeds in the garden. Uh -huh. That they know may never see it grow. Amen. Oh, that's what I love. Glory. We too busy working on history. Uh -huh. We want to be the first at everything. Uh -huh. How about just build a legacy? Glory. How about plant some seeds in the garden yeah. so that legacy grows? Yeah. 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 This is precisely why we need our faith to go into action. I'm almost done. But some of us are still. M-I-A. Uh, and if you're M-I-A, let me remind you that faith without works <laughs> is dead. Y'all got it now. <laughs> Young folks, leave a Christ-centered legacy. Middle-aged folks, leave a Christ-centered legacy. 
mature folks, it's not too late. Leave a Christ-centered legacy. Because I don't want somebody to record some stuff about my history. I want them to be filled up with my legacy. I want them to know wholehearted that every ounce that I had when I came to the knowledge of faith, even when I messed up, now I know to point people to Jesus. Amen. I want you to know that my life is centered around the God I serve. I want you to know that my life is centered around Jesus Christ that died for me out on Calvary. I want you to know that Jesus did it all on the old rugged cross for you and I. Amen. I want you to know that Jesus was all about his father's business yes. when he lived on this earth for 33 and a half years. Amen. But one day, Jesus was sacrificed for my sin Amen. and for yours. Amen. And they placed him in Joseph's borrowed tomb. Yes. And I want you to know that early one Sunday morning, Amen. Jesus got up. Yes. And he got up with all power oh, in his hands. Yes. And I'm grateful, grateful for that sacrifice that he did it all by himself so that I could trust him and have faith in him that he will take care of me, that he will provide for me, that he will be my anchor in a time of a storm, that he will make sure that I know by the power of the spirit that works on the inside of me that I can lend a helping hand to my brother or sister. Amen. That I can make sure that somebody's got some food to eat. Amen. That I can make sure that I can help them with some clothes on their backs. Amen. That I can make sure that I'm Jesus' hands and his mouthpiece and his feet. We should be exercising our faith walk, Amen. not a fake walk. Amen. I want to close with a story from yesterday. I attended the funeral, the funeral of a wife of a longtime friend. While I don't have permission to mention her name, I can't tell you what was said about this woman. A member of her church mentioned how she was like Phoebe in the, in the book of Romans, chapter 16. So Stigo, he mentioned how she was like Phoebe multiple times in the book of Romans chapter 16 because of how she served her church. It was amazing. I, I had to call my wife and, and, and my sister-in-law and, and, and they heard me say how many times people uh, refer to this lady and they use words to support that like Christ follower. They use words like born again. They use words like compassionate. Words like kind and courageous, committed, devoted, Steward, servant, leader, encourager, dutiful, faithful. And that means she didn't just make history. She left a legacy. So I ask you again in my close. When it comes to us exercising our faith, after we've been born again, after we've said that we profess Christ as our Lord and Savior, are you MIA? Are you missing in action? Or do you just want the front spot so you can be seen? Are you missing in the action of your faith walk? Or are you so blinded by your faith walk that you can't see that you're missing? Are you MIA to the point to where you've become so self-absorbed that you don't see anything else happening around you and the whole world could be in need right before your eyes? Are you MIA? Glory. No relationship with Christ means that you won't just be MIA in heaven. Well, but then eternally you'll be just an M. Yeah. <laughs> the choice is yours. Shall we stand? This is an opportunity for each of us, each of you that don't know the Lord.